what kind of things did you learn from Tommy Jarrell, somebody like that? You know, a master of. of well, I learned of a lot about music. drinking strong coffee, <laughs> and and that you could use seven dust to kill the fleas on your dog. No, I, <laughs> I don't recommend. I, I don't recommend that. The strong coffee, yes. The seven dust, no. Uh, no, he he would, you know, he would he was really good about showing you tunes, but he would show you how to play it, not necessarily teach you how to play it. He would show you what he did uh, in terms of, well, you do that little thing right there. You know, but he, but he wouldn't really slow it down and say, okay, now we're going to take our index finger and slide it from the first fret to the second fret while... You know, it, it wasn't a lesson with Tommy wasn't really necessarily like like a lesson that we would in the same way we think about them today you know where they where everything is broken down to the to the smallest fraction it was it was largely going and hanging out and playing tunes you know you'd right. sit and you'd play music for hours and hours and hours and you're and every time you go it was largely the same repertoire so you didn't just have one chance to hear a tune and learn it you had every encounter with the old folks that you went to visit, you know, because they, th there was no YouTube or CDs mm -hmm. or flash drives or, you know, for them to learn from. So they learned in real time at full speed and they would show you in real time at, at, you know, as close to full speed as, as, as you were capable of absorbing. Um, but they had a limited repertoire. So they played the same tunes. They didn't learn a new tune every week or five new tunes every week like a lot of people like to do now, you know. Uh, they didn't have huge repertoires. So, you know, maybe 50 to 100 tunes would, would encapsulate the entire repertoire of a, of a region, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah. so, so you had lots of chances to learn. So when you'd sit down and, and you'd say, and, and, you know, a lot of times Tommy would say things like, now, have you heard the way they play so-and-so? over yonder at the Fiddler's Convention or whatever, they don't play it right. Here's the way you're supposed to play it. And he would show you what he thought would be the way that something should be played because right. that's the way he heard it and understood it. Uh, but it, it, each individual player in our area, uh, I, I got to spend time with Dick Spreeman too, who was another great climber banjo player. Uh, he was another Round Peak style banjo player, lived in Round Peak. Um, and his style was, although it was the same style as Tommy played, they played very differently. And if you listen to a lot of the players, you know, like Fred Cockerham or Kyle Creed, who were both great uh, round peak style banjo players, neither of them played like Fred or, to, or, or, or Fred or, or, or Kyle didn't play like Tommy or, or Dix, you know. Uh, th th there's a drive, there's a feeling, there's a flavor that the music has and their techniques and approaches, but they didn't necessarily combine all the techniques the same way to create the tune. It was a, it was an individual expression on each of their parts. So, you know, that's kind of the way I feel that we, we you know, do music now or should do music is, is that you learn the music and you learn a style and then you, you make that piece your own. You know, you, you, I, I, I like to, to, uh, take that music and say, I, you know, now this, this was inspired by so-and-so's playing and here's the way I understand their playing of it, you know? So, so learning from Tommy, uh, like, like I said, was not like a lesson, but it was, it was learning not only music, but a lot about the culture. He loved to tell stories and you going to visit him for me was like going to visit my own grandfather.